uh, I guess you could say warm months, during the winter months, when uh, some of the um, restaurant tax and tourism and hotel tax uh, dips a little bit. So the indoor sports complex was the number one uh, project selected um, through that process. And then tonight, um, we're going to hear from three of the eight teams, um, our committee, John Maynard, Molly Hood, and myself, uh, screened eight proposals and three now have made it to the top. Um, there is a sheet, if you did not get one over on the table, um, there, it kind of gives a little bit more detail. I don't want to take any, way, any time away from the presentations, but just wanted to give you a little bit of a heads up on uh, the history of this project. So the way it will work this evening is the teams have drawn straws and uh, West Cape Development Corp will be going first. Each team gets 15 minutes um, to uh, give their presentation in whatever format uh, that they've chosen to relate their information, which would be uh, their facility and their site. Um, we'll then listen to team two, which is Mid-America Corp, and then team three, um, uh, South Kings Highway uh, Partnership and that's Joe Bannister in the back. So um, we will be strict about time. There will not be questions until the end of all three uh, presentations. So I hope you all uh, can delay your Cinco de Mayo celebrations for about an hour. And just really, again, appreciate you all coming uh, to be a part of this process. We also have uh, public comment cards available on the table and pencils. Feel free to uh, complete those and leave those on the table up here at the end of the presentations. And I saw John raise his hand. I think the order on two and three was different. Did I do it, diff did I do it backwards? Yeah, I think those South Kings Highway is second and Mid America is third. Check with Joel. I think that's what they do. Are you third? Okay, that's good. They know their order, so that's great. <laughs> All right, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mr. Larry Hartling, and you can introduce the rest of your team. And the time uh, will start when he gets to the mic. Well, first, I want to thank everybody for coming out this evening for uh, this very important new addition to the city of Cape Cod, uh, the Indoor Sports Center. Uh, I'm Larry Hartling, and it's is Barbara I mean, we represent West Cape Development Company Corporation. And uh, I've been in the community a long time. I've been in real estate 50 years. <clears throat> a lot of you old timers probably recognize me and whatever. So I've seen a lot of growth, but this project really does excite me. I think it's going to be wonderful to the city of Cape. So let me tell you first a little bit about West Cape Development Corporation. <clears throat> The corporation was started in 1973, and uh, I mean, the Dalton Corporation was by the Shawnee Farm. <clears throat> Some of you old timers might know where the Shawnee Farm is. Uh, it was 75 acres of ground on Independence Street, uh, bounded by East Rodney on the east, went all the way out to Mount Alder Road. Uh, on the south, it was my, uh, the uh, St. Francis Hospital, and on the north was the, the creek, close to the, the road the creek up there. So anyway, it's 1973, and we're trying to develop an undeveloped piece of ground. Independence Street was gravel. And so what I do with this ground, uh, I'm desperate to try to find a sale, and Mr. Jack Maynard with Advanced Business Systems made the first purchase out there. Thank you, Jack. I still, <laughs> I still appreciated that. And you still own the building, I think. But anyway, I built a lot of buildings. I built commercial, uh, single family, apartments, you name it, whatever. Uh, so now, uh, moving ahead, in 1995, we heard that Dean K. Hopes of Dean K. Healthcare was going to move out of uh, Carroll. So we approached them and talked them into coming to Cape. And they brought a lot of employment, whatever. So we built a 60,000 square foot building distribution center for them at that time. It also had 8,000 square foot office, interior office space. So they operated until about 2005, 
and then they were purchased by uh, McKesson Drug Company. And when McKesson bought, we built another 60,000 feet. So we have 120,000 square foot of commercial property available uh, for this project. So we think it's, a, we know it's the best location. It adjoins the park, Shawnee Park. Uh, it, it's a perfect location for the city of Tate. And uh, Mark's going to tell you about the building and why, why it is the best location for a drug. Good evening. Now let's talk about the best location in town, which we know is the best option. The location and building that we are presenting is located at 1823 Rust Avenue. It is unique and ideal for a variety of reasons. It is well suited for this project as it is already constructed and ready for renovation. We are ready to enter into a partnership with the city to design and construct an indoor sports complex. The Rust Avenue building is 120,000 square feet, as Larry mentioned, and it will accommodate six basketball courts, which can be converted into 12 volleyball courts. And they are, right, this is the basketball courts and uh, soccer field and office space. Um, there is also area, when I mentioned uh, office space, that space can be used for concessions, locker rooms, storage, uh, whatever the city would like to put in that area. It is more than large enough to meet all the RFP requirements and allows for significant expansion. The location is located, it is located next to the Shawnee Park Sports Complex. So this is our location right here in this whole area here is the Shawnee Park location with the soccer field being in this location right here. And this is an artist rendering of the building after it would be renovated. Notice the two mile and the three mile radius on this location. Two mile, three mile. As you can see from the board, it is just minutes away from Cape Central High School, shopping, restaurants, and hotels to name a few. These are all within a two mile radius. While just minutes away from I-55 and the west side amenities, our site will also allow visitors to experience much more than the interstate area. The location, this location will bring visitors within easy reach of downtown, Broadway, SEMO, midtown and downtown restaurants, the Cape's historic riverfront, and the new casino. And its grandparents, they may want to skip over there to the casino during the games. And 67% of Cape's populace. This increase in the number of visitors to our city will positively impact economic growth for Cape Girardeau. This site has the potential to support Midtown, Downtown, and the West Side, which as I stated, will increase revenue to all these areas. The highlights of this location. We feel it is the best location to serve Cape Girardeau due to the fact that it adjoins the current Shawnee Park Sports Complex. Again, this is the building and this is the Shawnee Park which has Shawnee Park, which currently has an outdoor soccer fields, baseball fields, and a small indoor sports building. This site is very well known with the traveling sports families throughout the region. Games can be played outside and inside simultaneously with our location, making it the best choice. Ready access from many directions near the main arteries of 74 and 55, and I think that's shown here in the third ring, the purple part right there. Um, this um, being near the 54 and 55 and 74 access makes it accessible for all visitors from Illinois, Kentucky, Central and Southeast Missouri. Another advantage, it extends and enhances the existing facility that is located on this piece of land. It has established infrastructure with flexibility to retrofit the existing building. No extensive site work is needed. Utilities are in place. We're ready to get started. A 350 kilowatt generator that will double for a large scale emergency relief shelter in case of major power outages supports this facility as well. This property has the space to park 500 cars in a parking lot that would be between the indoor sports center and the existing shoddy park. And the parking lot is right here. And again, soccer field, Shawnee, 
the building, and the parking lot. And if any of you have spent any time in this area, you know that parking is at a premium on a busy sporting weekend. Another plus, future expansion. This property has availability for future expansion. 7.5 acres, which is located right here, is across the street, north of the existing building. <clears throat> the ability to brand. One of the strongest reasons is the ability to tie or brand the outdoor facility at Shawnee Park with this indoor facility. We feel this is one of our strongest assets. The city has invested a substantial amount of resources in this area. Families can have more than one child playing sports and never leave the area, a strong safety issue. Cost, a most important factor in this equation. Our architect has given us an estimated figure that will meet the criteria for the budget that is within the guidelines of the RFP. This is our goal, on time, on target, and on budget. I have been taught that after seven minutes, one loses their audience as their eyes tend to glaze over. So with this in mind, I'm going to just wrap it up. We hope this provides you with a basic understanding of our building and proposal. We have always been forward thinking and progressive in the growth of Cape Girardeau. Our commitment is to partner with the city to design, build, and support the city's operation of a complete sports complex that will help build, help further Cape Girardeau as the Midwest grows on the Mississippi. Thank you again for your interest and time. Remember, location, location, location. And Brad has some handouts, if anybody would care for one, uh, it's smaller uh, of these big boards. But take a look at them later if you like. Again, thank you for your time. much. I would like to introduce to you Mr. Joe Bannister and he will introduce his team. We'll just give him a few minutes for a transition and then when he steps up to the mic, uh, his time will start. <laughs> actually, um, Max will actually present uh, a lot of awards here. At the same time, we're also going to uh, use the PowerPoint. He's our design build partner in this project, and John Ryan is here. The property uh, is owned by Dr. Raymond A. Ritter Jr. and his wife Ann, and they've owned the property for approximately 30 years. So um, we're going to have the PowerPoint of our project just kind of playing in the background as we present. And first of all, I'd like to thank the committee. The committees run a very fair and accountable and transparent process. And so thank you to the committee for, for stepping up and doing the process. I do projects all over the state of Missouri, and uh, the process is important. That it's accountable and transparent to taxpayers, and in this case, you've had that process. So <coughs> let me get into our site a little bit. Um, the, our site is at the corner of Kings Highway, uh, Southern Kings Highway, or South Kings Highway, and that site um, <coughs> is there near Wilson Road as well. Um, the site is approximately 18 acres. Um, we have looked at the site in a variety of ways. We need approximately 
uh, nine of the acres to build our project, which would include and match again to our programming, but the diagram to my left is our indoor rendering, our in schematic. The next area, or the next board is the site as we plan on having it laid out, and then this is the rendering of the exterior of the building. So, with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Matt and let Matt talk a little bit about the design build process. Hi, I'm Matt Sander I'm with Arco Construction. We're a Missouri-based general contractor, design build general contractor. Uh, we do work nationwide. We currently have about 50 to 55 projects nationwide. We've worked in about um, 20 to 22 communities within the state of Missouri, of which we've recently completed a project in Cape Girardeau. Uh, we've done work in Sykesman, Missouri. We're actually uh, about to start on an expansion of the building in Sykesman. So we're really familiar with the area and looking forward to the potential of being able to work in the community and work with local uh, contractors that we've started and, and, and to build relationships with folks that we've worked with before. And um, I guess just to talk a little bit about the programming, you know, the, you know the, the site plan that we've worked out, again, like Joe said, it's at the corner of, of Southern Expressway and South Kings Highway. And um, we're confident that we've met the requirements of the city with regards to being able to accommodate the, you know, the programming associated with the building. You know, we're confident with the, the site coverage that we've got you know, for expandability potentially in the future. For, to allow for plentiful parking you know, to support the facility where it's an easy walk to three different points of entrance into the building. And just the rough schematic, um, you know, and again, to meet the programming of six different basketball courts, to be able to have two different volleyball court play on each, and indoor um, artificial turf area for indoor soccer. And then we envision, you know, kind of an entry point, you know, to, that would have concessions and common restrooms with meeting rooms such as this to be able to hold public forums and, and for those to be able to double for recreational areas for, for uh, team sit downs. And if you're a parent like myself that with kids that play sports, there's always never enough room for that. So we're really excited to be able to work within the parameters that the city's given us and feel confident we've, we've provided a space that can accommodate those things for team sit downs and, and recreational areas for this to be a, multi, a true multi-purpose building. One of, the, one of the reasons that in, in development, my family's been in the real estate business for two generations, and I'm in the second generation of being a developer. Um, my projects have gone from a plant science center in Mexico, Missouri, to corporate headquarters deals to sports facilities. I'm currently working on a sports facility in St. Louis that's very similar to, to what you're trying to do here. Um, if you look at the economic impact of one of these projects, uh, and a similar project in St. Louis, it's approximately $5 million. That is tourism that comes in that is seen to stay, and you all have a wonderful base already of a lot of successful projects in the Parks and Recs Department. So we were asked in this case um, to come in and do a design build project and to, and to look at a site that is um, what I would call possibly your front or your southern front door of the city. Um, this city, this site lends itself to that. It, it would be a catalyst for development in that part of the city as well. Um, we've looked at the budget on this project. We know that we can easily match the budget and hopefully also be under that. Um, I've worked on over 200 projects. All of my projects have finished under budget. Um, by going into the design build methodology, um, we're able to uh, concurrently run a different set of activities and go, when we go through that our process to be able to begin and listen to the public and listen to the community and be able to build exactly the facility that you would like that's key to us and so the design build methodology works extremely well in that what we refer to as delivery method so when we look at this site we know that we can easily fit approximately a hundred thousand to hundred and twenty thousand square foot project we have ample parking we have, as Matt indicated, all the programming in the building that was required. We know that we can easily, easily be under the budget that has been set for this project and we'll deliver a first class project. Um, the building is approximately 25 feet tall for the spec specification and in our project we're using the tilt up method of construction. It also allows for easy expandability of both uh, to the east and west of the site. Um, and the parking, as you can tell, is plentiful. We have three entrances in and out of the property. 
Um, we have a stoplight, we'll have monument signs, we'll be able to do what you already have, which is expand the existing facilities that you have in this area and deliver a project that we believe that everybody will be proud of. Um, we have our, what I call our slide deck, um, a project that is similar in nature of what you're trying to build. Um, those courts that you see and, and the amount of clear span, when you have a project that's designed to build, you are delivering a project that meets exactly the square footage that you need to be able to, to be efficient. So we look at life cycle costs of the building. We know that this project has 20 foot wide aisles. We know that we can divide the courts easily. It's very expandable, very adaptable. Um, and as we go forward, we know the city will be able to be able to do a first class mm -hmm. job in managing our the facility as well. So we basically provide a turnkey uh, facility in our budget. We're also including all the furniture, fixtures, and equipment. And so from a taxpayer's point of view, we're very accountable um, in that delivery method. So with that said, I think we've reached all of our points. Um, I too believe in that we can be brief in our comments, we'll be able to answer more questions. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be here to explain our project. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Joe. If you guys want to collect your uh, boards, and then I'd like to introduce uh, Diane uh, Jury Edwards and Joel Niker from Mid America. Corporation, uh, please come on down. It's your turn, and they're our last presenters this evening.
bit about our proposals. So first off, our proposal, if you remember the color scheme, and again, you'll have a handout here, the section in blue is 10.27 acres. That section is what's required to actually facilitate the indoor sports complex and its parking. Uh, Inter-America Hotels has made a proposal to the city that we would donate that 10.27 acres at fair market value. So it praise what had to be done, but the actually ground would be donated to the city as part of our proposal. Um, in addition to that, the, the property obviously is already ready to be, to be developed. Uh, Chris Kaler and his team have actually went through uh, a number of various different uh, soil samplings as well as confirming electrical, sewer, and gas, et cetera, and so forth. So it's all there. So there's not a significant amount of development cost that would be necessary. In that Next off, let's talk about the site opportunities. So one of the visions that comes into play here is the ability to capitalize on existing facilities that are already in close proximity. So think about the latest project on Magical Playland, think about the county parks, think about this downtime between games that parents, kids that are younger ages and so forth can go play in between games and actually be able to appreciate some of the other amenities that the community actually has. The other piece that, that we see as a strong opportunity is just the visual nature of coming up and down the Interstate 55. Coming from the south, obviously you've got the Mecca from the Cape Central and CTC and the educational focus. Coming from the north, we'll have industry with LaSalle Interchange. And what a great vision it could be to actually have an indoor sports complex with what we're also proposing in the yellow there is outdoor play fields as well too. And I'll get to that next. So again, it's just a photo of the land of Patrick Magical Playland and its close proximity to the entrance of the city. So our second proposal that's part of the proposal is there's 19.12 acres that's in this yellow shaded area that we're offering to the city on a, an exchange basis with other property that the city may own. So the first 10.27 acres is donated. The second 19.12 acres is pretty much an open slate that the city can utilize for outdoor fields of any type of play, whether it be baseball, softball, soccer, whatever. The scenario is what Parks and Recs actually wants to put together and utilize, but obviously complement the existing infrastructure of parking as well as the indoor fields. And so uh, the, the layout of that per se hasn't been designed and so forth, but our proposal is to do an exchange based on a fair market value of existing property that the city may own. And so, uh, as noted, uh, our focus was comfort and flexibility. Um, we've actually, as you'll see here in a few seconds, uh, focused on centralized restrooms, um, elaborated on concession areas, which is a major revenue source associated with the facility of this type and so forth. Um, again, uh, Toby and his group and great design have been instrumental in putting that together. So, our facility has the following. And you'll see this on the render. We've got six collegiate sized basketball courts that was specified in the RFP. In addition to that, those collegiate basketball courts, hardwood courts, can be converted into 12 regulation volleyball courts. And then our proposal actually uh, uh, proposes two indoor soccer fields instead of one. So within that 120,982 square feet, uh, we're able to actually capacitate both soccer fields and the six required basketball courts. The other thing that we added, in addition to volume, I'll just give you a rendering of it. Um, we've also spec'd in, and this was in complement to Mr. Gill and his recommendations in regards to the revenue source and the major demand from a baseball perspective, is that we've designed in uh, four drop-down batting cages, as well as the soccer fields are convertible to three indoor baseball softball training fields. So a little bit about our specifications. Um, everything is going to be uh, structural piping and connections. There'll be divider curtains that are electronic that drop down. So one of the focus points that when we talked to the consultant was to make it as uh, labor, uh, less labor intensive as possible. So instead of having people going out there moving dividers or moving basketball goals, moving volleyball standards, the specs that we put into our proposal is that everything would be electronic. So basketball goals would go down electronically, volleyball standards would go down electronically, as well as divider curtains to actually separate the building to its specific needs. Same scenario on volleyball, as noted, uh, divider curtains, protective netting is going to be around the entire area for spectator safety, um, which is pretty important. And one of the other things that we spec in 
um, when given the design, uh, was uh, actually using glass, uh, uh, shattered glass uh, uh, baseboards. I forget what they're called, eight, eight foot, what are they called? Uh, Batter boards or something? Yeah, the, the boards around the, the facility. So uh, again, it's talked about uh, the, the layout that we've got from a, 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 I guess, an amenity space. It says you enter into the building offices, um, a large kitchen concessions areas with additional seating, some party rooms to generate some revenue when the facility is rented by you know, either local residents and or families that are coming uh, to actually do parties. And then obviously the common area uh, restrooms and then uh, ample storage for various different things such as chairs, et cetera, and so forth that may be necessary. So, kitchen layout, a detailed kitchen layout is provided as part of RS, RFP. Again, the goal on this was a, a design of a kitchen that could be full blown kitchen where there's high occupancy and then using more concession slash refrigeration sales during low occupancy where they could actually shut off some of the equipment along the One of the strategic things that we put into our bid proposal as well, too, is that we recommend using pure grass. So instead of an infill, um, rubber pellets in the actual soccer fields is this is about 15% more but still within line of our budget but it's actually a tight knit uh, nylon fiber um, carpeting slash uh, infill that just plays just like a soccer field would but allows from a sanitary perspective it to be cleaned. So instead of having to rip out all those rubber pellets etc to support this thing can actually be cleaned. So for bodily fluids and kids spilling or glass etc to support um, a pretty strategic thing that, again, is salt recommended. <laughs> and so those are those bad boards we've talked about. They're, they're glass boards that allow for those spectators that aren't paying attention to be obviously safe, guarded from a flying ball in one direction. Our, our proposal is uh, a design build, um, similar to uh, those other proposals. Ours is not an estimate, it is actually a firm bid at 11996 um, under the $12 million number that was uh, basically set as the threshold for the project, um, we're, we're able to actually produce via design build with Bill's team um, this facility with those amenities that we talked about. And that's the, that is the last one. So we, as our team as well too has handouts that we'd be happy to provide to, uh, to members and all right, so we want to thank all of the project teams. It takes a lot of work, a lot of effort. Um, all these folks um, uh, put forth a lot of time um, to pull these proposals together. So right now, what I'd like to be able to do is of um, all of our project teams, if you have a lead representative that you'd like to have come up and sit up at this table, and then we'll move these boards out of the way, and if I could get uh, Molly and John to come on up, um, they are our committee review process team with, along with myself, and then we will open it up for questions. And then I will close it with kind of where do we go next. So questions about uh, either the presentations or anything that comes to mind. No question is, uh, yes, public comment cards as well. There are no silly or dumb questions, as your teacher used to say. Yes, yes. Uh, Lula Fo works off with probably one of the young members in the security. I'm so excited to have Whoever gets the proposal, indoor soccer complex to grow the community is just awesome. Move back to town and see it grow with the casino downtown exploding. So first off, great job to the cape and everyone involved in developing the community. Um, so that's going to tie into actually the question I wanted to ask is the development of the properties. I know each proposal said that they had an additional room to expand. I'm interested in how much uh, expansion room each proposal has and the ability over the next five to ten years to actually develop that property and make it work. Wow, that's a big question. I love your enthusiasm. Um, the Each proposal is a little bit different um, and the teams can answer this if I mess any information up, um, but I believe that the uh, first team um, 
Uh, Mr. Hartling, they identified uh, seven acres. Um, their facility is adjacent already to the uh, Shawnee Park uh, Sports Complex, which if you're familiar with, but they did identify seven additional acres that could develop into whatever might be the demand for that. Um, your next uh, presenter was Mr. Uh, Bannister and his team, South Kings Highway, and I believe you have some adjacent property as well? We also we have adjacent property as well, um, but also the way our building sits on our site, we're able to expand the building without having to take out additional parking. So we probably have room for approximately another 60,000 square feet. So in under roof? Um, the uh, last presenter, I believe, uh, just had identified your uh, acreage. There's an additional 19.12 acres that was identified on that lot available for the actual play and or expansion of the building. We've played out the building strategically where if there was a desire to put a curve for a soccer field or say the man was there, that it's structurally set up. Does that answer your question? Yes, and I guess the second part was developing not just the complex itself, but as all the proposals said, they were going to add additional, you know, who knows, restaurants or uh, other indoor facilities or another shopping center, strip malls. And just curious, I know we had seven acres, 60,000 additional feet, and 10 or 12 more acres. Or Right. Well, and you know, I, it's really great to be able to dream of what else could happen, but we probably that will happen in time. Um, so I think each proposal provides an opportunity to expand and grow wherever the demand might be. But thank you for your question. As one of the other younger people in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think of the economic impact that it will have on the city. Is there a number of, let me phrase it this way, of additional visitors this complex will pull into the city on an annual basis? There are is estimates. Out there somewhere? Well, there, there it is. It was done through our uh, consultants as part of the uh, process to determine um, which facility would be selected. Uh, the indoor sports complex. Uh, for that very reason, um, proved to show that uh, there would be additional hotel nights, possibly anywhere from 4,500 to 5,000, conservatively, additional room nights um, annually, along with, I believe it's probably several million dollars in economic impact, I think is one of the presenters had mentioned. Um, that is happens when you spend money in cake, you get gas, you get groceries, you go to restaurants. All of that is spin-off funds, um, monies that come to the city. Do you can I? Absolutely. So when you look at that economic impact, so a similar facility in St. Louis that we just designed and, and are in the process of uh, finalizing the detail fund, that number is about $5 million. And that's sales tax revenue. There's all sorts of economic impact. I mean, so just to give you an idea, that number is $5 million. I think all three of our groups are committed to using local workforce. And so when you're collaborating with the local workforce, all of those jobs that are created stay in the community. And I think all three teams have to have a successful plan to do that. So the impact would be larger as well. Thanks, Joe. Uh, yes. Adam is very also young and very enthused member. <laughs> um, you had mentioned earlier uh, as far as the uh, the out of town guests would be coming in and the ability to access for each one of the facilities. I'd like to tell a bit more about each of the three proposals, how they plan as far as ease of access, park and other media they offer. You know, local people not the only ones utilizing these facilities. You're gonna have a lot of out of town guests and travelers are coming in to visit us. And I can know a bit more about the ease of access for each proposal as far as out of town guests and uh, you know, other amenities as well. That's a great question. Why don't we just start at this end? Barbara, if you want to just answer and then we'll just go down the line. Yeah, ours is a little self-explanatory. Exit 90 
broadly to the access and flexibility. The other thing, comment was made about economic development. Um, we do believe that the ability to do what's been done in 96 and what the future with 102 is, is that doing this strategically across the interstate corridor and to truly com uh, basically uh, capitalizing on Highway 61 and development opportunities there for restaurant development. Well, and, um, Mr. Nykirk, if you all aren't familiar with the language he's talking about, he is talking about exit numbers off the interstate. Yeah. I, that took me a while to you know, clue into that when I first moved here. I was like, we all like it. So thank you for explaining that. So, so our side is, a, is the most southern side. It's just a catalytic development for that area. So the potential to develop in that area is stronger around our site. Um, we're not right off the interstate. Our, our intersection is probably your most southern development point in the community. And so that's really why we advertise our, our built our site around the fact that it's, it's catalytic for that area. And so there are businesses that are existing there. Um, but that's probably a different ward. I, I'm assuming the city's planning the ward, so that ward would be um, directly impacted because it, it will have new businesses that will come to it. So um, it's not just our site, it's more of the other sites that are around our sites that will be impacted. Great, thank you. Did that answer your question? Great. Other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, that's an operational question, and just like any new facility, uh, once we get the nod to um, get started, recruiting uh, events and tournaments would be one of our top priorities because we want to be able to hit the ground running. And so uh, depending on how uh, busy the facility is, we want to try to save money where possible. So uh, as it grows, you know, we kind of have projected a three to five year window of uh, growth until it reaches a, a pretty large operational capacity after year five. So I would imagine that we would keep it open as long as the demand is there, but uh, shut it down selectively when the demand is not in order to save money. She probably might disagree with you about some of the basketball court usage, but there is timing to everything. So sometimes uh, things are, are busier during peak times, and then during low times they get utilized for other activities. So thank you. That's a good question. And, and we're going to be huge, huge spaces. So being in cooling, huge, huge spaces has a different uh, cost impact. So we're just going to be smart about it. We're going to be smart with those taxpayer dollars, and we're going to build systems where we can do part of the part of the building and not part of the building. So you know, it really comes down to protecting that taxpayer dollar. That's a great so ad, really, Scott. Really uh, cognizant of that with their existing facilities. This should be a little different because it's a, it's a big space. Yes, sir. I didn't hear anything in the proposals about the fans that are going to view this. The seating capacity in any of the proposals. So I'd like to privilege to address that. That's a great question. How many of them are going to be at there? Let's start that way. So, so our concept, all, all of the budgets, and so most of the designs all had a criteria that we all responded to. And so as part of that, all of the proposals have what we call furniture, fixtures, and equipment that would be available for budgeting. And so all of our budgets are below a certain <coughs> number. And so all of our proposals contain things like bleacher seating, um, and we try to make that as flexible as possible. Um, and you also have chairs and things like that. All of our proposals to the city um, are 
to the commit, committee, I should say, contained a number of parties. So yes, there is seating for all of the courts, volleyball, all of that flexible. As far as the indoor soccer or baseball fields, those type of indoor sports activities, that would also be flexible. And all of this, all of the projects probably have storage capacity or what we call back of house to make all of the facilities flexible for that storage. But it, when you think of it, it's not a premier arena site. None of these have been built with the concept of what we call a premier, I'm not speaking for everyone, I'm sorry. But it's not a premier, it's not like a regular arena type atmosphere. There's multiple courts with multiple games going on. So you have flexibility of what type of seating you need, whether it's you know, four, five, six row bleachers, chairs, those kind of things are what most of these venues operate. In, in our design, working with consultants specifically, um, some of the things we took into consideration was mobile bleachers, mobile seating, and during the typical tournaments, what he's found in the 25 facilities that he's operated, that one of the spaces, one of those large spaces, would not be occupied. You could be doing a basketball, volleyball tournament, you could be doing a soccer tournament. So typically, then overflow happens for teams while they're waiting in between, they go into that other space, and we have portable chairs and portable bleachers allowing them to congregate. But I believe the capacity of the facility was set at around 1,000, um, 500 parking spaces and so forth. And, and so from a numbers perspective, um, but again, it, it, from, a, from a flexibility standpoint, that was one of the key points that was made from our consultants is to allow flexible features, <coughs> typical rollable, and ample storage space to provide to all of our customers. I agree. Uh, I have been to several of the sites that you Did that answer your question? Okay. Yeah. Others? Yes, in the back. I have two questions to all three. Is uh, what is the life proposed lifespan of the facility that you're proposing, and how does it relate to residential growth for the city over that period? Because tournaments are in frequent use, but residents use it much more frequent. So the drive time factor. Fully on that. Yeah, I it wasn't any defined lifespan. Uh, we built into the budget from an operating perspective as well, too. There's going to need to be for ongoing repairs and maintenance and things along those lines. I believe the hardwood floor had some, some type of 15-year or 30-year warranty on it and so forth. So that's obviously a large expense associated with all that square footage from the volleyball and basketball standpoint. The pure grass, again, because of its ability to be cleaned versus using the infield, um, had, I think, a warranty of five to ten years as well, too, and so forth. It just depends on the amount of play that's played on and so forth. Um, but the overall facility, based off of the design build that Mr. Menzel put together, um, similar to this facility, it's been here for how long? Fifteen years? Oh, yeah. Long, yeah. At least that and so forth. So similar type construction materials and design was put into the thought process to build something similar to what we can do. How does it relate to the growth of the city? I would say it this way, uh, when we look at uh, various different individuals come to the community and they stay in our hotels and are interested in possibly relocating here, um, certain amenities um, and where their kids can actually participate in those amenities become a major factor in regards to whether or not they want to relocate here. So we hear this numerous times in talking to physicians and talking to other professionals that then when they go downtown and they see the various different growth and activity down there, when they go out to join sports complex and they see that. So my, our vision is is that this type of facility would be another catalyst that would facilitate that and bring closure to that person that's got a kid that's fired up about soccer, or fired up about softball, or fired up about basketball, that, that we'd have those amenities for the community to complement that. Mm -hmm. Yes, and also one of my thoughts was that when you look at the size of the Well, and John and Molly asked me to also uh, reiterate to the gentleman in the back that uh, this particular sports facility is being designed primarily 
I say it for economic impact. So we will be looking to draw as many out of town uh, folks into the facility as possible to impact uh, that economic impact. Will there be local uh, usage? Absolutely. Um, the times will be uh, you know, prioritized based on the demand, but it, it would be probably incorrect thinking and to think that it will just be another community center and Osage center. It really is designed as a big sports tournament uh, venue. Uh, I'd like to add something. So, the, so our concept is we have lower life cycle costs. The type of building materials that we're building with um, tend to go to lower life cycle costs. Um, that's taken into consideration for our type of building, which is a tilt-up building. Um, the, all the facilities have the same kind of flexibility in design, but from insulation, energy usage, the type of building that we're working with is, is a little different. Um, from our site, I believe in the, in the transportation system is very well defined here in, in the city. I believe we're on a public transportation route. It would be easy to expand that. And I'm not from here. I'm obviously from, um, from St. Louis, and I apologize. But you know, everybody today is looking for health reasons. And I, and I see bike paths, and I see great assets that you already have. So all of the sites, I know our site can easily be linked to um, those existing systems very easy. So that was a good expand on that question. Sir, did that answer? Did you get a good, a good enough answer? Well, come, come see us after. We'll get a little more detail to you. Yes, sir. Do we know exactly where these teams are traveling from? Is it predominantly from the south and then more or Georgia and St. Louis? Would it be advantageous to us to, to develop the north side versus the south side? That's an interesting question. Um, let me try to answer the first, and I do have staff here that can probably just back up that um, when we did our research and the people that we service now, even in our local leagues, um, we draw from uh, probably all the way from Poplar Bluff to even Arkansas, parts of Tennessee, obviously uh, Illinois, some uh, Missouri, uh, all the way um, from tournament standpoint. Columbia, people come from Columbia and Springfield. I see Will Gorman is in the room. He is uh, the facilities administrator for the Show Me Center. Um, he could probably attest as well. He sat in on a lot of our committee meetings. Um, we just draw from uh, probably a five state region. And we utilized within our um, study research with the consultants about a, at least 150 to 200 mile radius that we could draw from. Uh, Memphis, Springfield, Jeff City, Columbia, um, obviously St. Louis. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I noticed none of the proposals included any locker rooms. Are these facilities generally designed without? So they're designed for. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to touch on. They're, they're designed for flexibility. So yes, uh, our our space has meeting rooms, and then we also have. Um, Kids that I I coach multiple teams in multiple sports and kids are always looking for places just to, they're kind of like living rooms they're look they're looking for places they can you know grab a healthy snack out of the concession stand and kind of sit down and sit there and text and do all the things they do with the technology that they play with today and, and I know our facility is designed with wireless internet and those types of things in the facility to help spur that but yeah they're kind of a people call them different things, couch areas, living room areas, and they're for teams that, you, when you have teams from all over, it's part of the experience of traveling with youth athletes, and, and that connection point is really fun. And so that's all, I know our, our facility has those, the same type of meeting rooms you have here with flexibility and dividers, that's what we look at as well. Yeah, we, we did the same thing, and one of the things we should keep did with our meeting space, though, as well, too, is during heavy, heavy tournaments, there's going to need about a thousand people the seating right now is for about 80 to 100. All right, well, you need to expand that. Similar to what we do in our hotels, we expand out into a meeting room for breakfast area during our water tournaments and so forth. And so we built that into it strategically. The consultant, the 25 facilities that he's built and operated, um, that they, they veered away from locker rooms just due to the fact that there's maintenance associated with them, and that's not what this facility is designed specifically for. So in our design build, um, there was a and really what you have are expanded restrooms 
so that if somebody wants to change, they do have a But no one wants to have the responsibility of the insurance liability over a lot of them. That's the bottom line of today's sports facility. We have 8,000 square feet that can be utilized depending on what the city um, requires and would like to see uh, that can be used into these same lounge areas, um, slash locker rooms, or what these kind of do. And maybe I just ought to follow up in that the proposed building diagrams um, were based on you know our needs and a budget. Once a final um, selection is made, there would be uh, some design flexibility based on you know what the city felt was going to be the most important amenities to add into those facilities. Yes, sir. I have a question for two of the groups. One, the uh, interstate group. Where does Veterans Memorial Drive intersect your property? Veterans Memorial Drive currently stops at Veterans. Yeah, their um, plan is to run it all the way. The plan is to add Linball Lane, where the entrance into the property is right now, and the Veterans Memorial Drive would then continue through the property. And again, that's not been designed yet, the specific design of it, but that's, we've got quite a bit of flexibility with that based on how the layout of the actual field goes. So it's going to vary away from the interstate then, because they moved it over from Vantage Drive, it was out there, but then we moved it over close to the interstate. And I saw where you guys done some excavating one time, and I was just wondering, did it kind of go through the middle of that, or would it mess up? <coughs> well, still TBD, it really depends on the development and what happens there, and what type of box development actually takes place in the course. And then obviously it would be continued in regards to how we work on the standpoint of actually developing that construction. So it's not been pre-designed that it's going to go to the corner and right line to 525, or through the middle of it, allowing the lots on both sides. The next question I have has to do with the southern entrance to the city. Uh, I think that your facility could be a great southern entrance. Can you address um, some of the aesthetics that you have planned in or what the outside of your building would look like that would make people proud when they get into the case yard or see something like that to be the southern front door? Sure, you're going to have for sure a monument sign, which is more like what, what we have here at Oak State Center. So you're going to have a monument type sign like that. You're going to have water on the property as well, so we have to retain water, and so we're able to use that type of water so it'll be an attractive way. Um, we have three points of getting in and out of the site. Um, and so from a traffic point of view, we have one stoplight intersection that's already there. Um, we'll be able to cross that easily. Um, and our, our, our building pad is really in the center of the site as well. So you have multiple points that come in and out. We also take into consideration for bus parking. Most of these types of facilities have a need for bus parking. Kids travel not all individually anymore. They, some of them are in small buses and those types of vehicles. So we've taken that into account as well. Okay. What's the oh, sorry, the exterior of the building. Most important question. Our building is, is what we call tilt-up construction. So we have a mix of panel, which is concrete panels, which are painted. We have masonry as well, so there'll be masonry on the front of it. And then we also have plants. That's similar to the picture that you had? Absolutely. So I'd be more than happy to sit down and go through that picture and show you exactly what that is. But those are drop-off points as well. And I think with the city, you did want one main point of coming in and out of the building, so probably all the facilities. No, no problem. I know there's got to be a few more questions out there. All right. Well, here is where we go uh, from this point. Um, we had a timeline of recommending to our committee, uh, John uh, Mater and Molly, who's behind me and myself, of uh, making a recommendation uh, to our city council. And that will be forthcoming at the May 18th uh, City Council meeting. At that point in time, this is the first time that really anybody has seen or heard uh, this information um, to this extent. And so the City Council members, this is a big decision. It's a big project. Um, it may take them a while to you know, weigh uh, the uh, different proposals, but uh, we will make that recommendation and they will review it and it will be up to them to make a decision at that point. 
Um, they could choose um, one. Uh, they could choose not, no facilities. There may be other things that um, they will want to do their due diligence on or have go back to the committee and ask uh, for more information. So uh, with respect to their our elected officials' decision, um, we hope that within maybe the next uh, four to six weeks that we could reach a conclusion. We do want to try to fast track uh, this facility. Um, we continue to collect that restaurant tax. That restaurant tax is currently scheduled to sunset in 2030. Um, part of this restaurant, I think the restaurant tax must have started being collected over in the 80s. Um, and like I said earlier, has funded other major facilities that have produced great economic impact uh, for Cape. Question, question. I knew if I talked long enough, somebody would think of something. While you, we, 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 we keep talking about economic impact, and obviously the economic impact of this facility is going to depend in large part on your success in attracting events to the facility. So what kind of discussions have you had about how you intend to approach that process? That's a really good question. Um, when we started uh, undertaking the research and the study for the facility, um, we approached all of our partners. We not only did we talk with staff, uh, we talked with our uh, Chuck Martin, our Convention Visitors Bureau Director. They go out and recruit and go to uh, different uh, trade shows and gatherings that um, event organizers like sports tournaments go to because there typically will be a bidding process that occurs with uh, tournaments and sporting events. Um, so we would be working with our Convention and Visitors Bureau. Um, they're familiar as well as our staff is very familiar with a lot of the tournaments that are being held at larger facilities which we do not have the capacity uh, to currently accommodate. Um, we get large events right now, whether it be Special Olympics or the Misha Volleyball, but there are a lot of events that we lose because we can't accommodate their uh, specifications. Um, so it would be literally be sitting down and developing that strategy of how we would go and procure uh, these events for years. A lot of these events are a bid for um, you know five, ten years down the road. So we would develop a strategy to do that. Ms. Thompson, one comment on that. One of the things that when we strategically design the two fields, one of the things we see in the hotel industry is even in the summer months when we have rain, right now we can we lose those tournaments. And so if we had the ability to actually bring those tournaments in house, it may be a bit pretty odd to run a tournament off the two fields, but it's doable. We just believe so because there's other facilities that do that, that we don't only complement that November, December, February time frame, but we also complement those weekends that everybody just gets back in their car and takes off and so forth. And so that the restaurants those individuals that make a living. There's 3,500, 4,000 individuals in this community that are employed by the restaurant industry. And they lose that ability to generate those dollars for their income as well, too. So it's, it's a complement, vice versa. It's not only new dollars for that winter time frame, but it's going to be retaining dollars even during the summer time frame as well, too. Can I ask something real quick? Please. I don't think it's, uh, the city has been committed in this whole process of making sure this is a state of the art facility. They looked at specking the wood floors and the basketball and volleyball areas and doing the turf that we were talking about so that this becomes a facility of choice the teams really care about. They want to come here because they can play wood floor and they're not playing tile floor. I'm not, you understand what I'm saying. But they want this facility to be top notch and want people to recognize it as top notch, top notch and they're committed to doing that and I think that will also help us navigate the process. I hope they're not due.
all over, you're monitoring the development all over, you have a very unique facility. But you have three really good choices to make and choose from. I, I again admire the committee for what they've done. You have some uniqueness to each of the proposals, but there is a demand for these types of facilities. There really is. There are people that do nothing but organize these types of All right, well, if we can go ahead and we'll conclude the meeting, but leave the opportunity for you to provide public comments. So please take uh, either a moment to fill something out if you're so compelled. Um, feel free to visit with our presenters and ask them more detailed questions that you didn't want to ask in a public forum. And so appreciate you coming. Uh, this evening and uh, happy Cinco de Mayo. Drive safely and stay tuned for more information. Thank you.